So having reviewed the laryngeal anatomy, let's just look at how we might visualise the anatomy in uh, clinical practice. So for example, if you go into uh, ENT or uh, anaesthetics, then you may be visualising this part of the, of the body quite frequently. That might be as a result of um, using a camera. So a camera can be passed through the nasal cavity and the nasopharynx and down to, to, to view the laryngeal structures from, from above. Um, or you may be visualising this part of the anatomy if uh, you're having to intubate a patient. So if you imagine a patient is lying supine on their back, this would be uh, the, the back. And this would be the, the, the chin or the face part of the, uh, the, the patient. This would be the view that you would see um, if you were then planning to, to visualise their, uh, their vocal cords and look through the um, laryngeal inlet. So here you see the, the tip of the epiglottis and hopefully you would have um, a laryngoscope or a Macintosh blade, which is something that looks like this. Uh, which very helpfully has a light on the end. So it allows you to illuminate uh, inside the laryngeal inlet into the supraglottic area. So if I open out the laryngoscope, you can see that um, this is a curved blade and it would have a torch uh, just there. So when a patient is, is lying on their back and an anaesthetist comes in, they would slide the blade um, over the tongue and we know that the base of the tongue would bring the tip of the, the blade into the vellecula. So we mentioned about the, the vellecula just being a little recess there. And then that would allow us to, to lift the tissue slightly anterior. And we can get a really nice view then through the laryngeal inlet. And hopefully you can see where number 26 is. Um, that relates to the true vocal cords and in real life they have a sort of pearly white appearance and then you'd want to try and slide the um, endotracheal tube um, along the blade through those vocal cords so that it sits um, much more inferiorly and into the trachea and then there'll be a cuff on the endotracheal tube that you can inflate and that will help to secure it into the into the trachea. So I can very quickly show you what an endotracheal tube looks like, which is here. Fold it in a little bit. Um, so you can see that uh, this end of the of the tube, which would be what would sit inside the trachea, has a, a, a deflated cuff at the moment, um, but you can inflate the cuff through this little tube here once the um, endotracheal tracheal tube is in place. So if I open up the model, I can show you how that tube would sit. And these obviously come in different sizes depending on the size of your patient. Um, but you would bring the, uh, the tube in through the oral cavity, which would kind of sit here, around through the oropharynx, uh, through the laryngeal inlet, um, through the glottis and then it would want to sit uh, down within the level of the trachea uh, so I'll just move it a little bit further down um, position it like that uh, and then the the balloon would be so this bit still hangs outside of the patient's uh, mouth uh, and then you can attach a little syringe and inflate um, air into the cuff and that will secure it uh, inside the trachea and, and this is what we, we call a definitive airway. So in terms of um, managing patients' airways uh, who are unconscious, who are not able to maintain their own airway, uh, and maybe can't even breathe for themselves, uh, then getting a, an endotracheal tube in there is, is, is kind of the gold standard of, of airways. And then this is the bit that you could attach up to a um, ventilator or um, a, a bag valve mask, which is something you squeeze uh, manually to, to, to move air or ventilate uh, the patient through the endotracheal tube. So that's one type of, of, of airway um, that you'll, you'll certainly be seeing lots of um, if you go and watch surgeries or do an anaesthetics uh, placement. So while it's very unusual that uh, certainly as a, as a foundation year doctor you'll be uh, intubating patients, um, you may be involved in managing the airway in patients who are unconscious 
or who have um, got into cardiac arrest and therefore require some form of airway management until someone with the skills and experience can come in and, and put in a, an endotracheal tube if that is deemed to be appropriate. So the, the sorts of things that you, you, you will probably um, come across and may even have to place yourself, certainly once you've done your um, advanced life support training in your later clinical years, are things that we call airway adjuncts. So what I'm showing you here is, is um, and they come in different sizes. Uh, these are called um, oropharyngeal airways. So they relate obviously to the oral cavity and the pharynx. And the way that these um, work is in a patient who is uh, deeply unconscious and they'd have to be at a certain level of unconsciousness to um, not have their gag reflex elicited when you uh, place in one of these um, airway adjuncts. But you may also place these in patients who are um, in, in cardiac arrest and, and, and uh, are not breathing for themselves at all. And the, the concern is in those patients is that, um, so instead of lying on their back, is the, the muscle is a, an extensive muscular structure. And when the patient is deeply unconscious or um, in cardiac arrest, all those tissues and muscles relax and the tongue can fall onto um, to, to the oropharynx effectively and, and completely close off the airway. And that's why we do the head tilt and, and chin lift is that actually by um, tilting the larynx, uh, sorry, tilting the mandible and, and lifting the chin up slightly, what you're doing is you're actually pushing these um, muscular structures um, up off the back of the, uh, of the oropharynx and therefore keeping the airway open. Now to supplement that while um, not having to kind of maintain the, uh, the, the head tilt um, chin lift position is the use of the airway adjunct, uh, the oropharyngeal airway is, if I just turn it this way around again, is it can be placed into uh, the mouth. So usually we, 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 we place it in this way and then we, we turn it around uh, to, to follow uh, the roof of the oral cavity and it will uh, sit uh, just on the outside of the mouth and the tip of it will sit, hopefully if you've sized it correctly, will sit just behind the tongue, just there. So what that will do is it will maintain a, a, a patent airway um, through through the hole here, through the gap, um, while um, ensuring that the, the tongue uh, isn't occluding the oropharynx. Um, so then when um you know if the patient is 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 able to ventilate spontaneously but is unconscious to the point that if they're sat on their back uh, or in a particular position the tongue could occlude the airway you may be able to put in a, an oropharyngeal airway or something called a nasopharyngeal airway which um by the same principle uh, is actually run through the floor of the nasal cavity through the nasopharynx and the tip of that tube would, would sit in a similar position uh, to try and keep the, 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 the muscle and the tissues of the tongue off the back of the, uh, of the oropharynx. Um, and, and that may be better tolerated in, a, in, a, in an unconscious patient, um, for example, in individuals who have uh, drunk a lot of alcohol uh, and attend A&E and are snoring as they're sitting in the cubicle bed. And you may be a little bit worried that their degree of, of, of consciousness is, is significantly impaired, that they may tolerate you putting in a, a, a nasopharyngeal airway um, that just sits um, at the back there and, and keeps the tongue um, off, off the back of the oropharynx. Um, if you try and put a, a Goodell airway in someone who's who's perhaps not unconscious enough, uh, you will elicit their gag reflex and they may not tolerate it. In a cardiac arrest situation, the patient is not going to have a gag reflex and therefore they will tolerate an oropharyngeal airway. Um, so if you're attending a cardiac arrest situation uh, as a foundation year doctor, uh, you may be um, in the position where you're placing uh, an airway adjunct in like an oropharyngeal airway. And once that's in place, um, it's going to keep the tongue off the back of the oropharynx. Um, if we imagine that the patient is lying on their back like that, uh, you can then place the, the, the bag valve mask um, over the front of the face uh, and start to, um, to, to manually uh, ventilate and deliver um, oxygen uh, through um, effectively this, this part of the, of the airway until someone can arrive that, that, that may be able to put something more, more, definitive, more definitive in like the endotracheal tube. So that's a Gidel or an oropharyngeal airway. Um, so you'll find them on, on, on every sort of arrest trolley on the ward.
another tube that you may come across is something called an eye gel. Um, so this is an eye gel in this little case. Um, these are relatively easy to, to place in patients. So you don't require the use of uh, the laryngoscope to, to view where you're placing it. Um, but it, it, it's called a supraglottic airway, but it doesn't actually sit inside the, the region of the larynx known as the supraglottic. It actually sits around uh, the laryngeal inlet. It forms a cuff around the laryngeal inlet. Uh, and these are really clever um, little things, really. Um, so they, they're kind of made out of a, um, a bendy material. Um, again, they come in slightly different sizes because patients will have different airways. Uh, we can see that there's a, an end here um, that we'll be able to attach, um, you know, the bag valve mass to or... Um, um, or whatever else we want to attach to it, uh, and then we've got this 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 end here, which is the bit that will sit inside the patient's uh, throat. Um, and this this interesting as as this warms uh, as it's inside the the tissues um, uh, within uh, the the aerodigestive tract, um, the shape of this molds to the shape of the of the anatomy. Um, so it's uh, it's quite a, a, an interesting uh, device, and and this. Um, well, this this one, this type of supraglottic airway is called an eye gel. Uh, there are other types of uh, supraglottic airways, um, ones that had sort of inflatable cuffs here, as opposed to ones that kind of uh, react and, and shape themselves, mould themselves uh, as they, they feel the warmth of the, the tissues. And again, this would be placed through um, the, the, the oral cavity uh, of the patient. Uh, you'd apply lots of uh, lubrication to, uh, to this part of the, uh, of, of the eye gel. Um, you'd do the, the head tilt chin lift because you, you know, if you don't, you, you're going to sort of run into problems with the tongue getting in the way. So um, placing this with the head slightly tilted and the chin lifted means that you're lifting um, these muscles and the tongues up and off the back of the oropharynx. And effectively, you slide this down um, until um, so you just push it in until you you feel it can't go any further, and um, and and so it, it's a, it's an easier tube to 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 place inside a patient than, than an endotracheal tube. And if we look on the model uh, where we see um, the eye gel, which is a little bit big for this model, uh, is actually sitting around the uh, laryngeal inlet. So it's not actually gone inside. Um, the, the larynx, it's actually uh, it's forming a cuff around the laryngeal inlet. It's kind of hugging uh, itself around the laryngeal inlet. Um, and as the uh, eye gel is in place, the uh, shape of the eye gel will start to, to sort of mould and fit with the, uh, the anatomy of the, uh, of the airway at that point and, the, uh, and the, the, the laryngopharynx as it's sitting just behind like that. So that's my finger that's forming the constrictor muscles of the laryngopharynx as it sits behind. Um, and then the tube uh, can be attached to your bag valve uh, mask uh, if necessary. So you may be putting or placing laryngo, uh, sorry, supraglottic airways uh, in cardiac arrest patients. And they also use these types of airways in certain types of um, operations as well um, to, to ventilate them uh, during, uh, during surgery. Uh, so that is a supraglottic airway or an eye gel. And like I say, it just forms a little cuff around the laryngeal inlet. So it's not actually going through into the supraglottis, even though it's called a supraglottic airway. It's actually a cuff around the, the laryngeal inlet.